Hey guys, Edgar Giffenick here. In the next 30 minutes, we're going to talk about mental training in tennis. My goal is to give you a very clear idea of what mental training in tennis means and give you specific tips and exercises so that you can play up to your potential more often. Let's clarify that. Mental training in tennis is not going to make me hit the forehand better or the backhand better. What it's going to do, it's going to allow me to hit my forehand up to its technical potential. That is very important. If you're like most tennis players, the mental concept of the game came late. So you started playing tennis, you started focusing on how to hit that perfect forehand or that perfect backhand, then you started playing some matches and then you suddenly realized, oh my god, I'm getting nervous, I'm missing some balls that I should not miss, I'm playing great when I'm practicing and then when I'm going to play a tournament, I play terribly, so what's happening? And then suddenly you start thinking about, well, this mental thing in tennis and uh, people telling you, well, it's mental and I think if you ask most tennis players, they all agree that tennis is a very mental game, but very few can define what that means. And that is my goal. So let's make one thing clear. It's very difficult to separate the mental part from the physical part. Anytime you do something, you're using your mind. Maybe even you, sometimes you feel like you're brain dead, but basically the mind is always working. The problem is that a lot of times it's not working in a way that's going to help you perform at your best. So if mental training or the mental part of the game, if the goal is to help you play up to your potential as often as possible, the first step is to understand what your potential is. Uh, I think a lot of uh, players have a hard time because when they're thinking about their game, they're hitting that great shot and they assume that they're able to hit that shot every single time. And when they don't hit that shot, then they start getting frustrated because in their minds, they're really playing below what they're capable of playing but maybe that's only an illusion maybe they're thinking that they're playing that they're pretty good but they're not as good as they think i think we all have this mental avatar of roger federer and we see ourselves hitting that incredible passing shot and we believe that that's our game so any mental program is only going to work if you start by knowing yourself. I think that is the first step of any mental program. What does that mean, know yourself? Well, basically what it means is that you have to understand what is happening on the court when you're playing. What is going on? Where are your thoughts? Where are your emotions? What kind of shots are you capable of hitting? What kind of shots are risky? What kind of shots can you count on? And so I think uh, if we start there, we're already one step ahead of everybody else. So how do I understand my game? Well, the first thing that you need to do is you need to understand technically what are you capable of doing. And in order to do that, you need to do a lot of exercises that required you to be consistent. In general, every time that you step on the court, you should have two goals. Goal number one is how fast can I swing but make consistently the shot into the court. So what is the fastest forehand that I can hit and make it consistently? What is the fastest serve that I can hit and make it consistently? And so you have to experiment. Uh, a great way to experiment is, is, for instance, you're hitting 
cross court forehands and you're hitting five very slowly then the next five are gonna be faster and the next five are gonna be faster and then you start seeing okay where does my stroke break down you do the same thing with slices with top spins with high shots with low shots with running shots and then you start forming a picture then you start understanding okay if I am running to my backhand and I try to hit this shot at this pace I am going to make 8 out of 10 but if I try to hit them at this next pace I am only going to make 5 out of 10 so if I'm playing a very important point in a match and I have to make the shot this is the speed that I need to make it at so every time that you're in the court you're you're trying to analyze and you're trying to study and you're trying to understand your game that is very very important the other thing that you need to understand every time that you're playing is how efficient am I on the court am I using too much force am I using too much muscle for my result so the question that you need to ask yourself constantly in practice is am I using the least amount of effort for what I am accomplishing that doesn't mean that you're gonna sleep on the court but it means that if this gets the job done then I don't need this so if every time that you're on the court you're thinking about those things and you're working on discovering how fast I can hit the ball without making mistakes you're slowly going to understand what your capabilities are also very important is to understand what type of game what type of player am I how do I win points how do I lose points I think that is very important to ask yourself okay so when I'm serving my first serve how do I win points what is my best serve what is the serve that I'm going to choose when it's deuce for all what about my second serve what is the fastest I can hit that serve and still make it in what is my best target on that second serve when I'm rallying should I run around my four my backhand and hit forehands how about my top spin backhand is it consistent reliable or am I better off just slicing the ball is it that much better when I hit topspin if I if I only make in uh, 7 out of uh, 10 when I hit topspin I'm making 9 out of 10 when I slice it do I really have an advantage hitting topspin those are the questions that you need to ask yourself also you need to understand what kind of shots you should be hitting in each part of the court so if I have a short backhand and I'm running forward should I slice it or should I hit topspin on it what is going to give me the best chance of winning the point if I'm backing up should I hit it hard with topspin or should I maybe just slice it in so you have to understand how you win points and how you lose points what does the opponent do to get you in trouble so how do avoid how do you avoid that and so by asking yourself these questions and by experimenting you're going to start understanding okay this is my game this is my potential so when we're talking about the mental game and playing to your potential you're going to understand that okay if I hit at this pace if I come to the net in these situations if uh, I hit my passing shot to this area I have a better chance of winning the point and once you understand that then it's a lot easier to to avoid those swings in performance once you understand your game then the mental part the exercises that you can do are really going to help you stay within that range and that is what mental toughness is mental toughness is not okay I play great every time but it is I play within a very narrow range that is my goal playing within a narrow range it's not a lottery it's not like okay I'm gonna go and play today I hope I can get the ball in the court that is if, if that happens 
that's really, you're not really mentally tough. Mentally tough means I know I'm going to go there and I'm going, I have this plan and that's, and I pretty much know I'm going to play within this, this range. So that is my goal. My goal is to help you get there. So first, you got to understand what you're capable of technically. Second, how do you win points? How do you lose points? Then, after you do that, the next step is to understand what is happening on the court. Okay? What are your thoughts? What are you thinking? What is your normal emotional state when you're on the court? Obviously, you want to do these in pressure situations because everybody's mentally tough when things are easy. It's when things are tough, things are difficult, lots of wind, a player that is really playing to my weakness, uh, losing to somebody that I don't think I should be losing. Those are the situations where, where things start getting dicey. So it is very important to understand what happens to me under pressure. So one great exercise is to write down all the ideas that pop into your head. We did this uh, exercise on the court, which was pretty funny, in an academy where we had two players play each other and everybody was watching and they had to say out loud, out loud everything that came into their head. You can imagine how, how that went, but it's a great exercise to, to really try to verbalize your thoughts and try to write it down and then analyze it. What are my tendency? What am I thinking out there? Are these thoughts helping me? That's, that's the, 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 the big question. There's no good, thi good thoughts or bad thoughts. It's, there's only thoughts that are either going to help you accomplish your goals or hurt you. So write down, go out there, play a match, and after the match just really try to write down everything that came into your head or in the changeovers. Use your changeovers and write down all your thoughts, all your thoughts. And that will give you a, a picture of what's happening. Also, try to write down your emotional state. How are you feeling? How are you feeling when you're playing well? How are you feeling when you're playing badly? Describe your emotions. That is going to be very important. That is going to give us a base to work on. And uh, Finally, what you need to do is you need to understand what your tendencies are. The good thing about this whole mental part is that you are going to react pretty much the same way every time under pressure. So you're going to get the same emotions, you're going to get the same thoughts, and you're also going to make the same mistakes. So if every time it's deuce, I'm double faulting, well, what is causing that double fold? Am I not accelerating my racket? Am I pulling my head down? Am I hitting it tentatively? What is happening? You're going to see that after you do this exercise for a while, that you're going to see that things repeat themselves. The same mistakes are going to appear over and over. Once you can identify that, then it's a lot easier to tackle them. Okay, if I know that I'm pulling my head down every time under pressure, right before I serve, I can remind myself, eyes on the ball at contact. Little things like that will make a, a big, big difference. So, remember, first step, understand your tactical ability. Second step, understand your, your, your uh, technical and tactical abilities together, sorry, first and second uh, step then you are going to understand your emotional state what is happening to me your thoughts and then you're going to identify the patterns when what kind of mistakes am i am i making all right so once you get that self knowledge then it's a lot easier to to attack our our deficiencies and to do that Basically, we need to, to get some tools. And really, everything that has been written about 
the the mental game in in, in tennis or in in sports uh, is basically just a, a recipe to stay in the present to focus on the things that are going to help you achieve your goals to be emotionally in in a state that's going to help you achieve your goals and to be physically uh, in terms of your physical tension and anxiety to be in a, an ideal state to help you achieve your goals so let's start by uh, the focus let's start by where what do i need to be thinking when i am playing basically there are three different stages in a game that require different focus during a point during a point, the only thing I need to be thinking of is the ball. I cannot be thinking about how I am going to hit the ball. That is practice. When I'm in the match, I'm, on, I'm only thinking about where I'm going to hit the ball and I am looking at the ball the whole time. A good way to think about looking at the ball is as follows. When the ball is on the other side of the court, your vision, your focus is broad. So you're going to see the ball on the baseline, you're going to see the player, you're going to see the whole court over there. As the ball gets closer and closer to you, the focus is going to narrow. Narrows, 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 and when the ball bounces from the bounce to the contact point, your whole focus is the ball. And that's where most of the mistakes are made, from the bounce to the contact point. Everybody watches the ball when they're playing, but it's very difficult to watch it all the time to contact. Uh, anxiety and uh, tension make us look up right before contact. So instead of hitting the middle, we end up hitting the sides. So when the ball is in play, your focus is on the ball. Train yourself. Train yourself to really concentrate on the bounce to the racket. Bounce, racket. That is a critical uh, time. Uh, one good exercise to, to practice this, let's say that you're playing and that you're getting distracted, start counting. But say the numbers exactly at contact. So when I make contact, I go one. When my opponent makes contact, you go two, but really try to do it exactly at contact. That way you're going to really improve your focus on the ball. Another good exercise is every time the ball bounces, you say bounce. Every time somebody hits it, you say hit. So bounce, hit, bounce, hit, bounce, hit. That way your mind is going to be on the ball during the rally and that's what you want. Once the point is over, what you need to do is you need to use that time to make a little bit of a self-check and prepare for the next point. So basically what you want to do is you finish the point, you forget about it. That's the first thing. Forget about the last point. Second, get your mind on, relax, relax a little bit. Get your mind off the point a little bit. And then third, try to plan for the next point. Plan for the next point, say, okay, at least when you're returning, you need to try to have a goal of where you're going to return and what kind of point are you going to play. Are you going to be aggressive? Are you going to be consistent? Are you going to change it up with slides? What, what are you planning to do? Same thing when you're serving. And right before you're going to, to serve or to return, you go through, through this physical ritual that's going to get you ready for, to start the point. And you want to make sure that you're mentally and emotionally ready. That means that your emotions have to be in, in a situation that's going to help you. You have, have to feel confident, you have to be energetic. And then you start the point. That is where you're going to focus between points. And thirdly, in the changeover. The changeover is a great time to first relax and second analyze what is happening. Who, what is, uh, what is my opponent doing to me? What am I doing to my opponent? How am I winning points? How am I losing points? And then come up with a strategy. That is, that is basically how 
you need to control your focus during a match. So the first thing is focus, the second thing is emotions. We need to be able to control our emotions when we are playing. And I guess the best explanation that I've heard about emotional control is uh, one in a, in a talk by, by Jim Lehrer uh, who, who said that playing tennis or uh, playing any sport at a, at a very high performance level is very much like acting. That means that your goal is to get your emotions in an ideal place. So you have to find the ideal mental state. And your ideal mental state is being confident, being energetic, being positive. Even though you're not feeling like that, if you want to play your best, you have to get yourself into that situation. It's just like an actor, right? So an actor might feel really happy, but if he has to cry in the next, uh, in the next scene, he's gonna have to get those emotions. He's gonna start, have to start feeling that sadness and making that change. Same thing in tennis. I might not feel very excited about playing, but if I want to play my best, I better start getting excited about it. And so the, the important thing about emotions is that they're totally under your control. You're really choosing to react a certain way to a situation. And that is, the, that is very important to understand. It's not like I got angry or they made me angry. No, I, cho I chose to get angry with, because of that situation. Uh, one story that I always like to tell is uh, there's somebody in the bus and there are three kids running around the bus and yelling and they're really rowdy and, and he's getting very annoyed, very, very annoyed. I can't believe it, the, the mother's not saying anything, these kids are going crazy, what's happening? So finally, the, the guy just explodes. Ma'am, can you not do anything with your kids? Can you not control them? And the lady just says, uh, oh, I, I am really, really sorry, but we, we're just coming back from the hospital and their dad is, is very sick and I really don't know what, what to do. And so this anger that, that this person had on the bus obviously suddenly shifts totally for, to compassion. So it's the same situation but a different reaction. And that is what you should be able to do when you're competing. So you need to find, you need fi find ways to get into this ideal mental state. And how do you do that? The way to control your emotions is through two ways. One is body language, the other one is thought control. All right? So if you're thinking every time you miss a shot, I'm the worst player in the world, it's gonna be hard to fire up for the next point. So your thoughts are not really helping. If you, every time you, you lose a point, you're just moping and your body language is just terrible and you slow down, that's, that's also going to to keep you in this, this hole. Thoughts and body language are going to change your emotions. Let me give you an example. My body language, if, if I want to feel really sad, what do I need to do? Well, first I need to be thinking about really sad things. And second, I need to get my body language into a, a sad pose. Because if I am smiling, even if I'm thinking about bad things, I am not going to start feeling sad. My body language is going against my thoughts. In order to change my emotions, my thoughts and my body language have to go in the right direction. So if I want to feel energetic on the court, I need to be thinking thoughts that are going to fire me up. Come on, you can do it, let's go. And also get the body going. So if you combine those two things, you're going to see a, a great change. A lot of uh, players tell me, yes, but I am lying to myself when I'm uh, telling myself, okay, you're playing great, don't worry about it. B why? Because I'm playing terribly. Okay, it is very easy for us to think about lying to ourselves when we're saying something positive. But how many of us go, go I'm the worst player in the world? We don't have any problem with that. Is that real or not? I mean, so uh, try to really think about 
thoughts and ideas that are going to get you in the place where you need to be to play your best. We call it, a lot of times I tell my players, fake it till you make it. Try to fake feeling the way that you want to feel until you start feeling that way. Try it. It will definitely work for you. And the third thing that you need to work on, on controlling is your tension level on, on the court. Uh, when we're playing, we need to be intense, but we need to be relaxed at the same time. Different players react different ways to tension. Some players, when they're tense, they get really slow. Everything slows down. They cannot move their feet. They feel like, like lead. So their whole body is tense. So what they need to do is they need to get some motion into their, into their body so that they start relaxing and they start uh, playing better and they start they start getting that intensity up. So how do you do that? If you're one of those players that kind of gets, gets tense and, and feels like lead, what you need to do is you need to move more. You need to move faster and you need to use your breathing to, to, to get you fired up. So you need to... So breathe a little bit faster than normal and that'll get you going. That'll get your intensity level up. Now other players when they get nervous, they start running around the court and doing everything fast and those players need to slow down. So for them, the recipe is the opposite. Slow things down. Move slower and breathe. Take long, slow, deep breaths. So if you're controlling your thoughts, your emotion through your body language, if you're controlling your focus and if you're controlling your, your tension level, you're already on your way to achieving this optimal mental state. But there's a few more things that you can do that really help. One of them is rituals. Rituals is a great way to shelter from the storm a little bit. Uh, Everybody, when, when there's pressure, tends to react certain ways. Some of those ways are conducive to playing better, some of those ways are really not. And the ritual, what the ritual does, is the ritual is going to kind of bring us home, bring us to a place where we're comfortable, where we don't have to worry too much about what's going on out there. So, where we're going to prepare to play our best. The rituals could be rituals before you get on the court, like there's a lot of players that always eat the same things before they play, they, they practice uh, a certain amount of time before they play, they, maybe they, they listen to music, they, they have a specific warm-up routine, something that they're familiar with that they don't have to be uh, worried about the match. They can really focus on, on their ritual, on the things that they, they know they can control and that they do over and over many times. Those are the rituals before you get on the court. On the court, you have to have some rituals that also are going to shelter you a little bit from the storm. When things are going, uh, when things are getting tough on the court, you need time to, to slow down and time to kind of bring everything together. And so it's very important that before you serve, you have a physical thing that you do, maybe bouncing the ball a few times, but more importantly, a, a mental thing. Something that you're just telling yourself, okay, come on, relax, everything okay, and this is how you're gonna serve. So it's, it's like a little place in your head that, that you go into before you start the point. Do the same thing with the return. There's a physical component that maybe it's okay, I'm gonna do something like this or get bounce around or something that you do over and over that kind of gets your mind and, and body and, and tells yourself, okay, we're, we're ready to get going. And then a mental thing also. While you're doing that, you're thinking about what's gonna happen and how are you feeling. I would like to finish the presentation with, with a final thought for you. When I was growing up, they always told me, okay, you're not gonna win 
if you don't believe that you're really gonna win but I found that very difficult because uh, if you're playing with somebody that's a lot better than you it's very hard for you to really convince yourself that you're going to win if you're playing it with somebody that you against who you lost the last five times it's also very difficult to really get on the court convinced that you're going to win so that concept is uh, didn't really work for me but what really worked for me is the idea of tennis being a battle against yourself it really doesn't matter who you're playing against your job on the court is to do everything possible to give yourself the best chance of winning what does that mean if I prepare myself and if I go onto that court and if I put myself into the best mental state possible and throughout the match I'm always checking my thoughts my emotions and making sure that everything that I'm doing that I'm thinking is helping me play my best that is the only thing that I can control I cannot control the opponent I cannot control how well they're hitting or how lucky they're, they're playing or uh, or the wind or the referee or anything else the only thing that I can control is myself so when I'm on the court my goal is to be focused on me if something is not working it's usually not a technical aspect it is not working because something up here is not working correctly so I have to understand I have to constantly check myself check my emotions check my thoughts because even a 10% more anxiety is going to cause a mistake so you have to be very in tune with yourself so start thinking about tennis as a battle against yourself as a way to really get to know yourself and to really learn how to control yourself so tennis is much more than a physical game it is a mental game but very very important is to understand what that means so next time that you're on the court really concentrate on winning the battle against yourself that is all what tennis is about thank you